<sighs> Tell me, Master Witcher, are all men swine? I've already made several videos with curious details about blood and wine, but there has always been this rather small side quest that I thought deserves to be highlighted. The name is Feet Cold as Ice, and I'm sure you've done it before, but I think there may be a few things that you didn't know about it. So let's go over them, and you'll tell me if I was right or wrong to think so. But before we even get to the quest, did you know that Jaquette, the quest giver, actually got an updated appearance at a later stage after the launch of Blood and Wine, just like Vimy Vivaldi did at some point after Hearts of Stone. I suppose I can see why they changed the wealthy banker, but I'm not entirely sure what made them change the model of this woman. Perhaps you'll tell me down in the comments if you know. But let's get to the meat of things. So you start the quest, maybe haggle a little bit. Rarely my want to turn down a damsel in distress, even less so when there's a... <clears throat> Prize involved. Master, forgive me, but you ask much too much. And you're off to find her beloved. You can either meet him at the entrance of the cave or find him asleep at his camp. <laughs> oh, oh, you scared me half to death, Drifter. One thing you may have missed here is that if you've already competed in the tourney as Ravix of Fourhorn, you will get the chance to awkwardly introduce yourself. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak! Ravix of Fourhorn. My crest shows a maiden sitting astride a... striding bear. Once you're done talking, one way or another, he heads down to the cave. And normally, the quest is resolved in one of two ways. You either change his mind about hunting monsters, and he ends up marrying Jaquette. Want to prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> or you don't, and he ends up hunting zebras in Zeracania. <sighs> can't say I see it happening, your success. But do what you will, and good luck. What? He was just here, just departed, having made a new vow, this time to fetch me a striped horse from Zeracania. <sighs> Tell me, Master Witcher, are all men swine? Good chunk of them, I'm afraid. <sighs> I should have donned a priestess's robe. Should you ever find yourself a lady witcher, be truthful with her to save the world some grief. But what you may have missed here is that there are at least two ways to get him killed. The first and less interesting one is to simply wait until his health drops down to zero during the fight. Which in my experience is no easy task, because Grotore will almost always prioritize attacking you instead of him, and he also tends to take less damage than you do. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Grotore, he's quite the disturbing monster. Uh, you know, eating small children and collecting their shoes in a cradle? A cradle filled with children's shoes. Doubt I've ever seen a collection this grotesque. But anyway, the easiest way to have him get killed is to simply run and hide in the alcoves or towards the entrance. When he is eventually dead, you will then have to finish the fight, kill the monster, and return with the bad news. However, there is a second and more interesting way, in my opinion, which is to simply let him enter the cave alone. You can just run away, meditate for a while, and come back. Better see what happened to the knight. Damn it, knight got ambushed. In that case, you will only find his corpse inside, entangled in roots. <sighs> Didn't stand a chance. Had to end this way. Beast knocked his torch away. Must not like fire too much. And this particular scenario opens up what is arguably the most insensitive way to finish the quest. Since once you discover his dead body in the roots, the game will not force you to continue investigating. So technically, right then and there, you can abandon the cave, never fight Grotore, and simply return to Jaquette with the bad news. 
Afraid I've got bad news. Sir Le Goff fell in combat. Oh, just as I had feared. He was so terribly courageous, bold to the point of being rash. He'd have done anything for me. Gran always said true love must end in true tragedy. It seems she was right. What's more, you can even demand your reward from her afterwards. She doesn't take it well, but gives you the money anyway. So, um, about my reward. Didn't manage to save his life, true, but I did. Re reward? I mourn the loss of the love of my life. Yes, you... The gall! Take your gold! Choke on it! He's no hero. That's the butcher of Blaviken. And just for the record, you can actually stumble upon Francois without taking the quest from Jaquette, but in that case, the scenario I just described is not possible. Specifically, you cannot take the reward from her after having him die and not killing Rotore. And I suppose the last thing I can think of is in the camp, you know, the small one Francois had set up. In there, you can actually find a letter he received from Jaquette, as well as one that he wrote for her, but he never sent. Now, these letters do not necessarily reveal anything new, except perhaps for the fact that she has somehow found a way to deliver a letter to him, but anyway, you can once again see the vast contrast between the way she spoke to him and the way he spoke to her. She would constantly use words like darling, beloved, yours forever and so on, and would keep talking about marriage. While he, on the other hand, wouldn't do either of these things even once. In fact, he ends the unseen letter... Uh, the um, unsent letter is what I meant to say. He ends it with very respectfully yours. So, if we weren't entirely convinced that he doesn't love her from the actual quest, I think these letters should clear any doubt. And ultimately, I believe it's safe to say that letting him go is the better of the two outcomes, since it appears that he doesn't actually try and get himself killed to prove something, but instead he chooses to leave his old life behind and start anew somewhere else. At least that's what I'm getting from this whole moving to Zeracania to get zebras thing. And so, I think that was it. Tell me what you thought of everything I said. Also, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like, and if not, well, I still thank you for watching. Finally, special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and my YouTube members, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good.